Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am the Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The topic of today's discussion is the continuation of two-couple system that we started last time. <music> If you remember from the last session, we said we consider a system two coupled when the wire in both sides uh, is engaged inside the bracket and receive a couple from the bracket. So if the wire engaged in both side brackets and it's passive, um, there's, the system is not considered two coupled system. On the other hand, if uh, uh, from both sides is receive a couple, doesn't matter how much is the magnitude of the couple, the system would be a two-couple system. To understand what happens if we engage a wire in two brackets, uh, we had this analogy, we said, if we put a wire inside the bracket and lift our hand, the angle of activation appears or increases between the wire and the bracket, and that would produce a couple, and that couple appears as a moment on the tooth. The closer that our hand was on the bracket, and we lift in the same magnitude, the amount of the moment was bigger. While if we were farther, and we leave our hand the same magnitude, the amount of the moment and the couple would be less. Based on that analogy, we decided that if you are standing equal distance between two brackets, and we lift both wire, same magnitude, as long as we are in the center, the amount of the moment on both teeth should be the same. Now, instead of using our hand to lift the wire, let's put a central V-band, means a V-band that is equal distance from both bracket, and see what's happening. In this example, application of central V-band produce a similar angle of activation in both adjacent bracket. Therefore, it produce equal couples and therefore equal moments. Now you understand why central V-band produce equal moments in both sides. But what about the force system? How much force each tooth will receive? To analyze the force system, uh, let's do another exercise. Let's assume we have a premolar and a canine, and we put a bracket on the premolar, but we put a button on the canine. And we do exactly the same thing. We will have a central V-band. Do you remember this system? Yes, this is a one-couple system. It's not a two-couple system. Why? Because the wire from one side receives a two-contact point. That's the side that you have the bracket, the premolar. On the other hand, it will have one contact point, so there is no couple. It's impossible to have a couple when you have one contact point, and that would be the canine. If I lift the wire to engage on the canine, a couple appears in the premolar, exactly like any one-couple system. And if you remember from analysis of the one-couple system, this would produce an extrusion force on the canine, an intrusion force on the premolar, and a counterclockwise moment on the premolar. Now let's do the same exercise, but from the canine side. We put a bracket on the canine, same central V-band, and we put a button on the premolar. Again, we lift the wire to tie to the button on the premolar. Now we have two contact point on the canine, one contact point on the premolar, one couple system. What do you expect to happen? You're gonna have extrusion force on the premolar, intrusion force on the canine, and now this time you have a clockwise rotation or clockwise moment on the canine. So these two one-couple systems somehow are representative of two couple systems that we have. If we add them together, you will notice. From the premolar point of view, he will receive a counterclockwise moment, but he would receive a intrusion and extrusion force that equal in magnitude. From the canine point of view, he would receive a clockwise moment, but he will receive an intrusion and extrusion that are also equal. 
So at the end of the day, these forces cancel each other and the premolar and canine only receive a moments that is equal in magnitude. Which direction are those moments? In rigid wire, if you put a central V-band, the moment goes toward the entrance of the V-band, the mouth of the V-band. This would be simple to remember when you are in clinical setup and uh, you wanted to see the, what is the direction of the moments that appear in your system. If you reverse the V-band, again, two moments will appear, but this time they will be opposite in direction. You need to remember, this is for rigid wire. For flexible wire is reverse. But how we can put a V-band, central V-band in flexible wire? The V-band is induced by the bracket angulation. So if the two brackets on adjacent teeth have exactly the same angulation, but they are going opposite of each other, if you put a flexible wire inside the bracket and engaged inside the bracket, the V-band appear in the flexible wire. This V-band, if the angulation of the brackets is exactly the same, should stay in the center. There is no reason that it should be closer to one or the other. This central V-band also produce only two moments. There is no force in your system, just two equal moments. However, these two equal moments, instead of going toward inside of the mouth of the V-band, they go opposite, out of the mouth of the V-band. So as a rule, if you have a rigid wire and you have a central V-band, you have equal moment toward inside the mouth of the V-band. And if you have a flexible wire, you didn't put the V-band in the wire, but the angulation of the brackets induce a V-band inside the wire. In those conditions, the moments is equal, goes outside of the mouth of the V-band. I hope you enjoyed the discussion of the two couple system today. Uh, next time we continue this discussion with the asymmetrical V-bands. Please take your time and if you have not subscribed to our channel now, subscribe and don't forget to press the like button. Thank you again and I hope you enjoyed the session.